Red vs. Blue Season 18 Episode 1 Viper has officially released, so let me break it down for you. So RVB Zero, as this season's called, is a completely new start to a story with brand new characters as well as some returning ones. It all still takes place in the Red vs. Blue universe, but just instead of watching it from the point of the Reds and Blues, we're getting a new cast of characters. Though it doesn't take long before some familiar faces return. The season opens up with Washington delivering some important alien device. Something that was neat was, of course, you have soldiers slacking off and blabbering for color commentary, but they mention how Wash's brain incident happened some time ago, of course, the events of last season. So this takes place in the future, not like uber a thousand years in the future, but at least a few years it sounds like. Then again, that might not be true because their armor is the exact same. But anyway, so Wash is delivering this alien thing, and of course, it's so important that the bad guys want to steal it, and they lead an assault on the compound, and we get a few fights. The blue guy, he's the tank of the group, big, bullet sponge, practically unstoppable. Seemingly unstoppable, because not a bullet affected him, and neither did a direct rocket. But I'd be willing to bet that somewhere down the line, martial arts will work, because martial arts, stronger than bullet. That's just science. Then we've got the pink evil one, I think that's Viper? She's got a very anime-esque weapon, it's a dagger that when she throws, she can teleport to and around. It really reminded me of that Final Fantasy Kingsglaive movie where that character did pretty much that exact same thing. He had a dagger that he threw and teleported in and around. It's probably why I used it as a comparison and why it reminded me of him. But then Carolina shows up, and she has a brief fight scene with them, which ultimately results in her losing and Wash getting taken hostage for information. Admittedly, I think the villains opened up a bit too overpowered for the season. I really like the fact that the fodder soldiers were actually shooting at them and not just like, oh, what do we do? And then they get killed. No, they were actually shooting and trying. Ultimately, it was useless because they did nothing. But the villains just felt mainly the blue guy. Like Superman, like nothing scratches him, unfazed by literally everything. Like what makes you bleed? At the very least, I'd have liked to see that rocket put him on the back foot or something. Like it's one thing if you're Tex and you're literally throwing rockets back around at people, but it's another thing to take a direct hit. Like in Tex's case, yes, what she was doing is insane and easily qualifies as overpowered as fuck. But despite what she's doing, that rocket still presents the illusion of a threat to her. If it wasn't a problem whatsoever, she'd have just tanked it, gotten hit, and moved on. But she was avoiding it because she's not invincible. But in this guy's case, there's no feeling of a threat, just god mode turned on. Viper is a different case because she didn't get touched. She was acrobatic, moved, and avoided getting hit, which is fine. It's like hitting someone with the gravity hammer or energy sword and them not dying. You think, well, this is bullshit. This man has the HP of a raid boss who can't be stunlocked. Anyway, then we've got the new characters, Shatter Squad, who are not officially Shatter Squad yet, I don't think. Really hard to say anything about them right now. They had a driving sequence, which I would place on the level of water levels and flying levels, so not very fun. Also, they were racing each other, and it was a friendly race, so it's not like much was ever really going to happen. If anything, I will say it showed off East, I think is her name, the pink one. She has an extremely hyper-competitive nature, similar to Carolina and her relationship to Tex back in Project Freelancer. Though I think in this regard, it's kind of worse for East because Agent 1, it seems like, doesn't really try and is more casual about everything, but still manages to be better, so that would piss me off. What I will say that I really liked and found kind of surprising for some reason was that Agent 1 didn't have an attitude. I think Ruby has sort of accustomed me to the main character always trying to defend themselves and act like they are in the right 100% of the time, taking no responsibility for their actions whatsoever. So it felt nice when their CO was lambasting them and one was like, hey, I'll take the blame. And then when he got all up in her face and said drop and give me 50, she just did it. No rebuttal whatsoever. Like, this is a military, there is a chain of command, and she respects that. And I really like to see that, honestly. It seemed like a good mix of carefree when she's with her friends, but still responsible when it comes to the military and her duty. We'll see how things progress with her since she's the main character, she does need some sort of innate flaw. Probably my biggest worry came in during Carolina's scene, and I don't know if any of you guys felt the same way, but to me it felt like she was defeated way too easily. Wash it makes sense, he was never the best or like an ultimately skilled soldier. 
but this is Carolina we're talking about. She's the best of the best. She's the most skilled character we've gotten to date, and she's a great character at that. Like how she came to the top, what she sacrificed to do so. And she didn't even phase or scratch any of these three. But let me be clear, it's not the fact that she lost, though I would have liked to see them not have a flawless victory. It was a 1v3 after all. But my fear personally comes in where Shatter Squad does. I fear that it's gonna be like, oh, Carolina couldn't do it, but this new group of characters, they're better than her and they can do it because they're more skilled and more capable. Like a disrespect for Carolina? Not saying that that's happening, but that's my fear. Listen, I'm just saying, put some respect on Carolina's name. As for whatever else was left, the fight scene's absolute quality. I've been saying it to the run-up of this season and even before, but Torian is the best fight animator under the Rooster Teeth umbrella, and he and everyone else who worked on these fight scenes, it is A+, plus, genuine quality. There manages to feel like there's physical weight to everything, the transitions to slow-mo works great, I can only expect the rest of the fight scenes this season to be just as good. There was slight instances where things felt a bit cartoony in the way the characters acted and moved. It didn't happen all the time, but it happened a few times that it stuck out to me. It does have this unique way the whole thing is filmed as well, where of course you've got your normal static shots and panning shots. It also does this handheld documentary way of filming everything as well, like the camera's all wobbly as if it's being held by some camera guy. It's a choice. I don't know exactly why they went for it, but sure, I guess. But yeah, I think it was a strong start to the season. It was mainly a fight scene, but I mean, that was good enough, quite frankly. Anyway, I'm more interested watching this first episode than I was going into it. So it did manage to pull my attention in there. But what did you guys think of the episode? Did you like it? Are you more interested? Is it just too different? Any and all thoughts, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.